Hello everyone, how about that for a dramatic start? What you just saw was my new sky shader. I created a little animation of the sun rising over my RTS game. The shader is available in the Godot asset library or it can be downloaded from my GitHub page. As always, the link will be down below. A few things were fixed in the latest master that improved performance. An updated sky shader can be found in the branch showing in the background. This version will only work with a custom build of Godot. The current asset in the asset library works with Godot 3.0, but it does have an expensive copy of the buffer whenever you change the time of day. The techniques used to render the background are called Rayleigh and Mie scattering. It involves ray marching through the atmosphere, and then for each of those points ray marching to the sun to calculate how much light gets filtered out and how much light reaches your eye. It results in an incredibly realistic looking backdrop. The GPU Gems article shown in the background explains it far better than I ever can. While I have written my own ray marcher for this, I came across a nice GLSL implementation by WWW Tyro that he has made available to the public domain. Thank you, Ryan Terrell. I was able to use his GLSL code in Godot with hardly any modifications. So this is our asset loaded into a Godot. Note that it is using the stock standard procedural sky when you load it up. Hopefully a fix that we're currently discussing will allow us to use the new shader in the editor, but for now it won't be available until you start your game. The reason is simple. We're not just rendering the background. If we'd just be interested in the background, we wouldn't be using a panoramic sky. We would just render the background and apply the necessary scattering calculations after we finished rendering all our opaque ge geometry. Then render all our transparent geometry on top of that. But as you'll notice, even with the procedural sky, there is more going on. We have a shiny sphere in our scene that nicely reflects the sky. This also affects our cube, which has the roughness turned up, but it still reflects a blurry version of our sky. There is also ambient lighting going on based on our sky map. For all this to work, we don't just need a 360 degree sky map, we also need to calculate a radiance map. This is done by Godot automatically after you assign your texture to the panoramic sky. This also hinders the use of the shader when lighting is baked to speed up rendering, as the sky map will not be available in time or may change after the lighting is baked. If you want to use this asset, you only need to get the contents of the sky folder inside of add-ons. You will find two scenes in here. The first scene is called skyrender.tscn, and inside you will find a simple color rect with a shader rendering out our sky map. There are a bunch of settings here that determine what our output will look like, but this is not the scene you should add to your project. That needs to be the second scene called skytexture.tscn. Inside this scene we find a viewport, and as a child of the viewport we find our sky renderer. This results in the output not going to screen, hence you can't see anything, but to our viewport. You'll see that we've added a sky scene into our main project, but it isn't being used. On our camera we will see that we've created an environment, it is important not to use the default environment, Inside that environment we've set up a panoramic sky. We haven't set up our texture yet, because if we create our viewport texture right away, our radiance map will be created before there is a texture to create it with, and our reflections will be black. Instead, our sky has a signal that lets us know whenever a new texture is available. We hook that signal up to a method in our main script. That then calls a handy little method inside of our sky texture. You pass it the environment that you are using, and it will assign the sky map texture in a way that triggers the update of the radiance map. Next we want to have control over the time of day we're showing in our sky. This is done by assigning a vector that points towards the sun. Again, I've added a little helper function to our asset that does the calculation for you. It is also able to align the directional light in the scene. This is important for rendering shadows and properly lighting your scene. It will also decrease the energy of your directional light as you near sunset. The third parameter lets you specify a horizontal angle. This is handy if your scene isn't facing due east and you need the sun to rise from a different location. The last thing we can set up is the night sky texture. 
This is optional, and when not specified, the sky at night will simply be black. This is a nice way to get stars into your night sky. Note that there are various settings exposed here, but I have plans to expand on those settings in a future version to give you more control over the background. In order to change the time of day, I've added a slider to our UI that lets you slide between a value of 0 and 24. The change signal on this slider is hooked up to a method in our main script that simply calls our helper function again. It also calls a function I've added to our main script that reorientates the night sky. There is a rotation matrix you can set on the asset that will reproject the night sky texture. Let's run this and see what this all looks like. You will immediately notice there are a few frames where the background is still black. There is an enhancement request I put in so that I can test whether the viewport has been rendered. For now, I've worked around that by waiting a few frames before assuming the viewport has been updated. As we don't expect the sun's position to change every frame, as the sun moves across the sky very slowly, this should not pose a problem. You really want to be conservative with how often you want the sky to be updated, as it takes a bit of effort to render such a large viewport. As we move around the scene, we can see that our sky map is properly reflected in our two objects in the scene. I did add some screen space reflections in this to see how that looked. The magic happens when we start changing our slider. I know I'm going back in time, but I love seeing how the colors change when you move it near dawn. Look at that red glow on the horizon and how that is reflected in our objects. I'm loving this. Our stars are showing through a little because our night sky is set to bright. I'll need to tweak that one a little bit more. Let's go into nighttime and you'll see there is a nice transition to our night sky map. Here you can also see that our scene is still being lit. By this time our directional light's energy output has been put to zero. This is purely the radiance map calculated from our sky map lighting our scene. Alright, that really is all I wanted to talk about today. There are a bunch of things in the pipeline. Those following my Twitter feed will have seen that I've put my terrain editor on GitHub. I'm also experimenting with adding vegetation into the terrain editor. On the VR front, Microsoft has provided me with an Acer MR developer headset, so I'm slowly getting my bearings to add native support for that. It already works brilliantly with Godot using OpenVR. Finally, I've teamed up with Nathan over at GD Quest to work on a tutorial together. Thanks for watching. As always, please give us a like and a thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time.